And uh, it was about humility, actually. That's what I was going to talk about today. And then during the week, I just couldn't connect very much to it. You know how sometimes you um, don't feel that inspired? And uh, this week, I wasn't feeling that inspired. So um, some things come up for me during the week that it, uh, I will actually talk to you about instead. But before I start doing that, um, I wanted to first thank everyone that's uh, been who's given me some funds to, in order to live, so I've been enjoying living on those. Um, and I'd also like to thank everyone for their emails that they send me too. I don't get to respond to many of them, but I do understand how, um, you know, I, I do read every email that's sent to me, and, uh, and I really do enjoy as well reading your personal experiences, and, and also particularly your personal experiences in growing on an emotional level. So I really have been enjoying reading those and, and I'm sorry that I can't always respond because there's just so many sometimes of them and also I'm processing a lot of things of my own. Um, but, but I am really uh, enjoying reading your, your responses. And I'm going to put on my glasses because I still haven't sorted out this long-term emotion thing yet. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm still not wanting to see the future. Who, who's like that? Yeah. A bit of afraid of the future? Yeah? And uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about with you today, actually. Also today, I wanted to give all of you an opportunity to ask some questions again. Um, I know many of you have, uh, in your own emotional work, have come up with lots of different things in that emotional work that have sometimes frightened you or sometimes scared you. Um, sometimes you've found it concerning like what's happened to you emotionally or sometimes in some cases I know that you've had certain connections with spirits and found them to not be too good connections and you might want to ask some questions about that as well and also some of you have sent me questions over the internet uh, via email which I'd like you know rather than what I've been trying to do is rather than respond to them uh, over the email one by one because that takes such a long time. I'd like to sort of more respond to them in a group setting. So also there are quite a lot of spirits here today. Um, many of you may feel very inclined to ask a question that you don't really know where that came from. And my suggestion is to just put up your hand and ask it because it's very likely that it's a spirit that's motivated you to ask that question. So if you could do that, um, because I, I do want to address uh, quite a few of my comments to spirits directly today. So it'll be a little unusual at times. You'll feel like you're not being talked to directly and the spirits will be feeling like they're talking to directly. So I'd like to also welcome those spirits. There's quite a lot of spirits who are in the hells here today and quite a lot who are in the natural love path here today as well. And I'd like to welcome those uh, here to the discussion as well. Now, what questions do you have, though, with your own progression, that you've, things that you've noticed about your own progression so far that have sometimes concerned you or freaked you out and, and you, you're worried about? Is there anything that comes to your mind? Um, it's, it's not something that worried me, but I would like to share this. Yep. Um, I you want to come up the front, Sharon? Yeah, sure. Come on. That way I can get you on video as well. Did you put your makeup on this morning? Or? No, I don't wear makeup. Well, neither did I. So. Hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself to me. Um, hello, my name is Jenny and I come from the Sunshine Coast. I was at the last talk that AJ did at um, Ilkey mm -hmm. and I actually spoke about my emotions with my mother who passed away two years ago. And I asked AJ a question, started to cry, and I was asking about layers of onions. You know, every time we take something, another layer comes along. So I knew that there were more layers because I was still emotional about it. So I deliberately went camping so that I could be away from the mainstream. I took a leaf out of AJ's book and I went bush. And I specifically wanted to clear a lot of stuff with my mum and I wanted to help her to move through the different levels in spirit as well as myself. 
I did that with the help of my lovely friend Nada. Uh, a lot of emotional stuff came up, a lot of anger came up, um, and I just kept persisting. And I said to my mum, we can do this together and we will both benefit from it. I go to a spiritualist church uh, up on the Sunshine Coast and I was given a reading. And this lady said to me, I'm sorry to the rest of you, but this is going to take a while. I've got a very persistent lady here who wants to talk to this particular lady and she's got a message for her. Uh, she said, this lady wants to tell you that you always tell everybody that you are just like your mother. I want to tell you that you are nothing like me except in the way that you look. You chose a different path. You will never end up the way I did, both physically and spiritually. And I am very, very proud of you. Now, I got very emotional, but I was extremely happy. And I went outside, it was pouring rain that night, I went outside and I danced in the rain, I jumped up and down and I went, yes! <laughs> because I knew it worked. I knew that what I was doing and my, um, my intention and my prayers were answered because I got a direct message from my mum. And there's no way anybody knew those sentences that my mum would have told me. That was absolute that I knew it was my mum because that's what I say to everybody. I'm the walking clone of my mother. Mm. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Awesome. So a, a good thing out of that too is you can see even if your parents have passed, you can work through emotional issues with them quite easily and, uh, and as long as you're willing. It doesn't really matter about their willingness so much as, as your own willingness. Is there anyone else who ha has had some experiences they'd like to relate or yeah. questions you'd like to ask? Right. Uh, last time Come on, we, Ryan. Oh, Come on. Okay. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Uh, last time we were together, um, was it you, Lo? Yes. That night I had dreams that I was flying a lot. Yeah. And then my mother, this she just triggered me, my mother showed up and she was standing right beside me and I've never seen her in the spirit state since she died 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she was standing right there and she was like walking slowly and I, w I said, I'm flying and she was walking. And she just uh, just kind of put her head down slightly, but she just stayed there and she just stayed there. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and went, wow, something that's really happened. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Another so, mom story. So you've had some shifts obviously with your mom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Since you've uh, been working <laughs> on the anger that we spoke about. Yes, yeah, the anger that we spoke about. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's moving. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Something that happened with between, do you mind me relating some of these things that no, happened okay. between you and I? Yeah. And Raya made some comments to me about, a, you remember the sessions that we did for those of you who were talking to me then? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had some sessions up at uh, Mullaney at Carol's Heaven in the Hills. Yeah. And, uh, and after one of those sessions, Raya sent me an email where she was quite upset with me, which was, which was really good. I really enjoyed her email. <laughs> and uh, she was so open and honest about some comments that others had made and so forth. And I sent her back, um, as I normally do, some quite confronting uh, material about looking at herself. Mm. And that made, had a big breakthrough with you, didn't it, that, that yeah. interaction. Yeah. And so after getting through this rage that she felt towards me, that I felt for a few days from her, yeah. um, then she dropped down into this, this sadness, isn't yeah, it, that's exactly. been there since. Rage. Yeah. Rage, big rage. First. Big rage first, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the sadness, and then the desperation, and then the, then the, just the quiet. It's been kind of like quiet. Yeah, then. yeah. It's a, I know it's temporary, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about getting real at the soul level, really, yeah. isn't it? Like yeah. understanding that all of these things are within us. Stop judging them being within you. You know how a lot of times what happens on, on the New Age path is there's this common viewpoint that if you're an angry person, then you're not spiritual, right? And so what do we do? Instead of skipping, instead of actually processing the, driver, the drivers for the anger, what we do is we skip over the anger and straight into, oh, I'm not angry anymore. Mm -hmm. And we get into this quasi-real state that's not real really, 
but it's just an imaginary place that we have told ourselves we need to be because we can't admit to ourselves that we're actually not that. And that's why it's very important to uh, be get really real. Remember, God knows what's really going on inside of you. And it's so important to remember that. Yeah. Anyone else would like to re mention anything? Far away. Want to come up? Want to come up here? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Who's afraid of coming up? That's why they don't want to say anything. All right, all of, all of you come up here. Like, like, here. Just, stand. Just stand here. So. Oh, hello. Yeah. And uh, don't worry about. I suppose there's a lot to worry about, isn't there? I didn't think about this. But yeah, actually, there is a lot to worry about. You may not want to do this. I just remembered that actually these videos are getting sent all over the world at the moment. <laughs> but anyway, is that scary? Yeah. Yeah. Far away. Um, I'm just, whenever I'm in my processing, I'm really, really in it. Yeah. And I can feel these heavy, heavy spirits. Yeah. Just, just like, they're, they're almost like they're touching me, you know, they're just dwelling right in. And yeah. then. I'm right in it, and then you know I'm feeling really heavy. Just speak up a little. Yeah. And I'm feeling really, really heavy. Yeah. And then, like, there's a sense of okay, you know, you start to come out of it. Yeah. And then the room lifts off. That's right. So. Do you want me to explain what's <laughs> yeah, happening? No yeah. worries, I'll do that on the board. Do you want me to go? You can sit there. Thank now. you. <laughs> <laughs> that was all about triggering those other emotions, you know, the ones about being yeah. in front of people. Yeah. <laughs> And many of you will notice that during times of processing you do feel really heavy. And during times of processing you do feel like that there are other, maybe other entities or spirits around you that are actually seemingly harming you during this process of processing. And that may scare you so much that you're tempted to actually get out of the process of processing. But let's look at it from a soul perspective. Here's your soul. Here's the souls, if you like, of all these spirits who have passed, right? So they're all just souls of all the spirits who have passed. And when you start processing an emotion, let's say the emotion is that you're processing is anger with death. Let's say that's the emotion you're processing. And then underneath that anger is grief about how your father's harmed you. In, and it might be just a simple harm that he's done, like just never listened to you. And you're just so angry that you've just never been listened to. And then you get into this terrible grief about that. So you start processing your grief about never being listened to. What that happens is your soul emits this energy. And it actually is different coloured energy. Different colours actually emit from you as you're processing an emotion. Does that make sense? And every single spirit in the, who is earthbound can actually see that happening if they're close enough to you, can see those colours emanating from you. Now, if those colours and the emotion emanating from you happens to mirror their emotion, they will rush to you. Does that make sense? And it's the law of attraction. So remember the law of attraction? It's the law of attraction at work, which will attraction which will attract those spirits to you while you're processing that emotion. Now, it has the effect of heightening your emotion in many cases. So let's say I'm really, really angry with Dad and there's a heap of women spirits in the spirit world who are really angry with their fathers and then you get angry with your dad and you start expressing your anger, let's say you're beaten with a baseball bat, a, you know, a punching bag or something like that and you start expressing your anger and what's going to be happening while you're expressing this anger is these spirits who are also in this state will be attracted to you and you will even maybe feel in more of an angry state because of that. But bear in mind that it's still because of the emotion that's inside of you that that's occurring. And all you need to do is stay focused on feeling that emotion and getting to the underlying cause of that emotion. If you stay in your anger those spirits will be able to easily manipulate you in acti to acting upon your emotion. So if you stayed in this anger with Dad, and let's say your father is alive, these spirits will motivate you 
to ring him up right at that instant perhaps and give him a big serve, you know? Or maybe write a really nasty letter to him and send it off to him or something like that. Now, the problem with that is we're not getting into the underlying causal emotion when we do that. And when we get into the underlying causal emotion, if any of these spirits don't want to get into the causal emotion of their own, they will leave you straight away. And all that will be left around you will be any of these spirits who can see what you're doing now, and then they'll twig themselves and they'll say, oh, right, you know, that's what I need to do. I just need to cry about this, you know. For many of them, it doesn't strike them until you actually doing it right in front of them. And then they actually connect themselves to their causal emotion, and they will often then be around you later, but around you, like, learning from you, rather than impacting upon you and affecting you. But the angry one, so let's say these two were angry, but this one was ready to deal with her grief. Well, these two, once you connect to the grief, which is the causal emotion, these two will leave you, and this one will probably remain around you and cry with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's going on there? Um, firstly, remember with a, with a lot of our emotions, there's two types of anger, and I've talked about anger before, but there's two types of anger. There's a type of anger which is denial anger, and that kind of anger is the type, time when you just stay in resentment. So for weeks on end, you just stay in the same resentment place. Now that's not the type of anger that will help you. The type of anger that will help you is more of a childlike type of anger where you're just really angry about how mum or dad has treated you and you go out and you get maybe a baseball bat. Well, what I do is I get a baseball bat with a punching bag and just start laying into it and swearing my head off, right? And just connecting with it, right? You'll find if you do that within a minute, usually what happens is you'll step into the grief. You, you can follow the anger, if you like, down the rabbit hole into the grief or you can stay in this really resentful place the resentful place, which is denial anger, is not going to help you at all. Yeah. So allow yourself to follow your fear or your anger into the grief state. And if you can't get to the grief state, there's one, usually only one reason why. And that is because you have an unwritten rule going on in your heart. And it's this one that is very popular, unwritten rule. I will not cry. Right. Now, many of us have that rule inbuilt within us. Why? Because we, we were taught it from our parents. Because we're men. Because <laughs> we're men. <laughs> yeah, for some, that's just the reason, our sex, kind of our gender. But most of the time, it's because we were taught it. We were taught from our environment or our childhood, you are not allowed to cry. Crying is weak, crying is powerless, crying is surrender you know, and all of these other things we believe about it. But remember I said in a previous session that crying is the grief, the grieving emotion is the healing emotion. So you will have to, at some point, whether it be now or in the spirit world, cry. My suggestion is do it now, get over and done with. <laughs> but uh, many don't, many wait till the spirit world and, and then find themselves having to do it there after a hundred or a couple of hundred years of trying to shut it down. You start crying, you know, you really can't stop and you don't even know what you're crying for. That doesn't, that's really great. Yeah. So the question was, what if you're crying and you don't know even why you're crying for and you just can't stop crying? My suggestion is don't stop crying, just keep crying. It doesn't matter what it's about and there are many, many times in your life that you'll find when you connect with a causal emotion, you will not know what it's about. Just stay in it until it's done and you'll feel when it's done, usually a feeling of peace will overcome you and you know whatever that was has now been gone and you won't have to revisit that thing anyway. So <coughs> rather than trying to work out intellectually what is happening, mm -hmm. just allow the emotions to know, you know, to go with the emotions. Yeah. AJ, you were saying that it's the emotion of grief that is the healing emotion. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, um, 
There are many spirits. Just let that truck go past. There are many spirits in the spirit world who are progressing on the natural love path who have to process their emotions. A few weeks ago I sent out, um, or Peter sent out I think, a email, I don't know if any, all of you got it, it was about um, post-mortem journal, uh, which is the experience of, of Lawrence of Arabia when he passed, and he was on the natural love path processing his emotions. So on the natural <coughs> love path you do have to process emotions. It's with, with God, you start, when you introduce God into the mix, that's about, there are many times in yourself where you won't know what the emotion's about. And you'll need a willingness to experience the emotion not even knowing what it's about. And you'll be at your wit's end at some places, at some times. And the key is to really talk to God during those periods. And, and talk to Him not about fuzzies, you know, you know, what you think about him and all those kind of things, like a, maybe a Christian perhaps would, using Christian in inverted commas, um, but rather talk to God about specifics. How am I really feeling here? I'm feeling hopeless, I'm feeling this and crying, and, and cry your tears out to God, and that's when the connection with God is established. So you can do that without God, or you can do it with God. Yeah. Yeah. My suggestion is do it with God, it's much faster. Yes. And I'm sort of like, yeah, how do you stop yourself? All physical responses are the result of you wanting to stop yourself. So, so say, let's say I'm having a physical response in my body to connecting with an emotion. So let's say um, a few weeks ago for me, I was just having this terrible pain across my chest, like almost like heart attack pain, right? And I know at that point all I'm doing is denying my sadness and it's affecting me across my chest and I want to deny this sadness because it's so great. So, so if you're feeling sick in the tummy, it's probably fear related. There's a, something you're afraid of that you don't want to face and so your body gets into this sick mode. So all disease, sickness and everything is, is the result of suppression of the emotion. So you are already suppressing as soon as you get sick. So don't suppress the su suppression by actually trying to not be sick as well. Allow the suppression to occur. Say to yourself, this is the result of me trying to run away from my emotion, whatever that emotion is. And then ask yourself, why do you want to run away from it? And just off the top of your head, sometimes I write down or just what, why I'm trying to run away from this particular emotion. And you'll see some really big fears come up that way usually. Yeah. No, no. Um, just a few days ago, I had a, a huge, it seems like a transformative experience with carrying this Jewish You don't need to come up here so I can hear you properly. <laughs> <laughs> come on. And, you, and speak that way, and that way everyone can hear. Come on. It'll be fine. Oh, I know. It'll be fine. I'll it's nurse an you. opportunity. I'll nurse wonderful. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had a, this, do I still need to talk? Loud? You need to talk this way. Yeah, this way. Um, I'm listening. Who do I look at? At them. Um. Just, just, just pick one of them. Imagine they're undressed, and then. Go <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. You might get a shot. Then I'll lose yeah. focus. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had this transformative experience where it, the, it seemed like the Jewish guilt and. Um, shame like so generational I, yeah, racial racial yeah. guilt and shame and yeah. it started with me you know yeah. just dealing with that and then there was so much available that I said give it to me because I could do something with it it felt like it went out for me yeah. and included others yeah. and then what's happening after that it's like all of the anger or the judgment whatever's showing up now I don't have to buy into it, but yeah. so so then I don't know if now I'm denying, but it it seems like an obvious impulse that I could buy into or not. Like yeah. my daughter doesn't want to be with me at Christmas. You know, I could go into that and feel really, you know, a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. But every time there's that impulse, it, it's like I let it 
go. Yeah. So I want to know the difference between actually processing what's there or actually making it show up just so I could process it. Yeah, you know, yep. like, good question. So yeah. does everyone understand what was going on there? What was happening is that she went through this transformative experience where the, a lot of the uh, oppression of the Jewish race, if you like, felt like it was in her, basically. The guilt and The guilt shame. and shame and all those emotions there. She went through and released that. They felt like there was a lot of other, perhaps, entities around you while you were experiencing that. You were, there were actually spirits there with you. It, it yeah. felt really good, though. It was yep. not a... It was... Yep. And then what happened is she started realizing that a lot of negative things that were occurring in her life that she would have normally have bought into and responded very badly emotionally, now she doesn't feel the need to buy into anymore. And it's almost like there's entities there that are willing to feed that, and I don't want to... It's like I'm going, hey, no, I'm Spot not on. doing that anymore. Spot on, yeah. And um, what I'll do is I'll explain there's two facets to this. One is that what you've done is you've released an emotion that has allowed you to no longer buy into this racial prejudice projections and, and the response that you have of guilt and shame and all those kind of things. And so you've released that emotion, but there are still other emotions that are still there that you will need to allow yourself to connect to, but your motive for connecting to them now isn't the same. Your motive now is going to be, I just want this out of me, rather than, I want to make your life hell, you know? Yeah. There'll be a totally different emotion. Because it was the idea that, I don't want to do this to myself anymore. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Does everyone understand what's going on there? Let's say, again, here's our soul. We're releasing an emotion, right? There's lots of spirits around us, remember? They're all attracted to this emotion. Now, if there's racial prejudice type emotions inside of us, there'll be lots of spirits of that race also connected to us, right? And many times we have this automatic biting off different things in, a, in you know, different negative experiences in our life. We bite them off because we have this emotion within us that I'm bad, I'm useless, I, you know, there's all these type of emotions in me that I want to defend. Now, the, the whole desire to defend your emotions is an emotion in itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. And many of you still find that sometimes, don't you? Like, you find that somebody criticizes you and you straight away want to get into the defense. Like, the feeling of injustice rises up in you and away you go. You will need to actually release an emotion about that and when you do, you'll find the same experience as what's happened here and that is that you will no longer feel this urge to defend. There's no longer feel this urge to actually bite off the other person's interaction with you, but you will still need to process some emotions because the law of attraction is bringing those th that event to you. Does that make sense to everyone? So you will find that there's layers digging down into these emotions, and what often happens is we bite off the defense of them, which is actually like not helping us to get to the underlying emotions that that will actually release from us. Yeah. So try to get away from this self-defense thing that goes on all the time. Yeah. Uh, I just want to um, share what's happening with me at the moment. When I started to cry up there, I came back down and I sat down and I thought, well, okay, what's this next layer? And because I was so angry with my mum, now I'm missing her. Yeah. So I've got to go outside and I've got to go cry. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll come back. Good on you. Good on you. Yeah. And if there's any spirits of water, come with me. Good on you. <laughs> it, Get used to, even in these, in these groups that we have together, you can leave any time. If something's coming up for you straight away, leave and let yourself connect with it, you know? Do that. It's great opportunities to do that. Yeah. I think I mentioned a friend of mine in Greece who did that last time I talked. Yeah. Who's doing very well, by the way. So. Yep. And um, uh, I guess I need to mention, I suppose, that like my grandfather was born with a birthmark on his face, and he was just 
Yeah, your grandfathers. Grandfather. Yeah, both here, as you're talking about them. Yeah. That's why I don't know why I'm crying, but obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously, they did a lot of more, like a lot of men did, and I suppose we're all affected by the wars and that. So yeah. basically, they're denying their soul to do all that. Um, your grandfather and father are um, here because they actually, you know, they realised that what, they, what everyone else was terming courage is, is, was actually some emotional injuries that they had. Um, and it wasn't real courage. Um, so that, you know, their, their feelings are now quite different about what is courageous and what isn't courageous. Um, but, uh, but they're connecting with you because they realise that it's a multi-generational injury that's been passed down through the generations in your family to you. So they're recognising that you do have that emotional injury too. Of, um, and it's also preventing sometimes your own connection with your own emotions like this feeling that I've got to be courageous yeah. to you almost means I've got to not cry yeah. I've got to not be weak I've got to not That's be right. powerful you know I've got to be powerful sorry not not powerless yeah. um, and what they you know what they're feeling is that you know it would be better if you see courage as being emotional is courageous being being emotional in fact is the most courageous thing you're going to need to do and they've come to realize that in their own progression in the spirit world so when, when they're facing Um, prayers, prayers in wars are very often not heard by God and the reason why is they're not in harmony with love most of the time so if you're praying you know to have an opportunity to kill your brother you remember that all of us are brothers if you have a if you're praying for an opportunity to kill your brother obviously God's not going to answer that prayer um, in, in, in a personal in a personal way obviously your desire is probably at some point going to have an opportunity to be fulfilled because of the law of attraction but uh, that pe people in wars have passed in very poor conditions generally and and they've had a lot of emotions to work through as a result of that as have your parent as have your father and grandfather and um, obviously the whole viewpoint of mankind today is very distorted when it comes to what is what God actually approves of and doesn't approve of your father and grandfather were both told that actually they were run they were waging a righteous war once they got to the places where they were waging their war, they realised nothing. There was nothing righteous in it whatsoever, and uh, but now they felt like they just had to do it, you know, and uh, and so they've had quite a lot of really hard emotions to work through as a result of that, um, and that and that's that's a sad legacy of war, um, and generationally that gets passed down to us too. Many of you who have had parents who have been in a war will find that you also have some really strong emotions about you know how disconnected these people and particularly the men when they came back from war were towards you and many of the men were so injured emotionally during warfare that they could no longer connect even with their family anymore and uh, and this is what you know we now term what post traumatic stress syndrome and a lot of those kind of thing, syndromes in reality it's because of the the damage that's done to our own soul is so great during those things that we do that we shut ourselves down on so many levels that we can't reopen ourselves without feeling the distress of all the things we've done. And so many of the men in that state never open themselves again until they pass into the spirit world. Mm. Um, AJ, you touched on PTSD. What about mental health? You know, as, I mean, I often Joan of Arc yep. versus schizophrenics. Now, how do you differentiate them? Because schizophrenics hear voices too. Um, I think I've talked a little about this before, but I'll, I'll mention a few things. 
Uh, schizophrenia, which I don't know how to spell. S C H O P H. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm just, just going to embarrass myself. <laughs> Schizophrenia is the uh, so-called mental illness where the person hears voices and uh, often the voices are very negative in their connotation and interaction with the person, causing them to even do things like perhaps harm themselves, so a lot of self-harm, or even perhaps uh, harm others, right? And the way the medical profession deals with it today generally is to medicate them uh, and, and that generally controls the illness is the illness I will also put in uh, quotations as well. What's actually happening is a schizophrenic person is a highly mediumistic person, number one. Second thing that's happening is the schizophrenic person is connecting to these spirits on a very regular basis and because the medical profession doesn't recognize, generally recognize, that voices in your head have got nothing to do with you and in fact most of the time are spirits. So remember here's you or here's your soul. Remember your soul is connected to your spirit body and your material body. Here's a soul of a person in the spirit world and they have a spirit body. They can connect to you in two ways. They can either go soul to soul connection which is what a celestial spirit would do or they will go an intellectual to intellectual connection through the spirit forms, right? And this is what's happening with our schizophrenic with schizophrenic people generally. When I say generally, pretty much all schizophrenia is this. So in reality, they are excellent mediums, but because of the the condition of their own soul and the condition of the soul of the spirits they are connecting with, can be quite dark at times. What's happening is the darkness in the condition reflects the interaction. And because they don't know how to control that, how, what's actually going on within themselves, med the re what medication does is medication changes both the physical and material bodies to the point where it detunes you from a spirit connection. Now most schizophrenics don't get fully detuned from a spirit connection. They get detuned enough to not listen to the voice or to not hear the voices clearly. But many of them do know that these people, that there are people talking to them, and they do feel inside of themselves that they are people talking to them and not their own thoughts. But the medical profession is telling them that it's their own thoughts. And that in itself creates a lot of confusion. The feeling they have inside of them is not my thought, it's something else, it's something else. Someone else is talking to me. So they told me to do this, they told me to do that. And all I did was did it, you know? All I did was do that because I, that's what they told me to do. They are generally also, schizophrenic people are also, they have an emotional set that's quite unworthy. So they have a feeling they have to follow what the voices tell them to do. And many times there's a feeling of power that comes along with following what the voices tell them to do. And often they are feeling powerless and so the interaction happens quite freely between the spirits and the, and the, and the person. So they are awesome in, uh, mediums, really, in the end. But because mediumship is not recognised in mainstream health generally, um, there's all these other explanations that have come up for it instead. There's lots of ways to help a schizophrenic person. One way, firstly, is to firstly help them understand that principle. Is to understand they are actually talking to spirits. Secondly, that they're probably talking to spirits who are not in a good condition. And the reason why they're not in a good condition is because emotions in them are attracting the spirits who have the same emotions and the spirits can easily influence them into doing different things. <coughs> and this is why schizophrenia often occurs after a person has taken drugs. So like they've taken some kind of recreational drugs like marijuana or some more severe drugs and, and there's a lot of spirits in the spirit world who want the connection with a person who is taking drugs because they took drugs when they were on earth and so they want that connection and they keep influencing that connection. And as long as, so if they understood the truth of what was going on, um, a lot of schizophrenics could be helped greatly um, just by understanding these basic truths of what, what, is, what is happening. So that's schizophrenia. 
Uh, manic depression is a very similar condition. Manic depression is where the person themselves are in a state where they're feeling powerless and they want power so badly that they'll almost do anything for it. And what happens is there's these spirits who feel powerless and who are looking for power. And what they do is they connect with the person and give the person all of their energy that they can possibly give them. And what that does is it sets up the manic phase in the manic depression state. And the manic phase is where the person doesn't sleep or sleeps very little and they've got so much energy and they'll go around for months, a month on end or two months having sex with whoever they want, drinking whatever they want, doing all these other things which are actually the things that these spirits in particular want to do. Now what happens is the body then, this body, the physical body, gets into such a depleted state that the spirits can no longer maintain the connection. When that happens, the connection between the spirits and the people on earth breaks and that's when they have their big crash. And they may stay in that state for as long as the body takes to recover itself from being totally connected to spirits for such a long time. Once the body recovers, they go back into the high again. And off it goes again. Now all medication does again is just detune the connection. But it doesn't stop the spirits from hanging around. So every person I've ever talked to with manic depression, they've usually got six to ten spirits hanging around them who do this as a group. And, and so one of those spirits might be a spirit who's like, feels that she's missed out on sex on earth. So she'll just, she wants the body for sex, right? Another one might feel like she's missed out on drinking when she was on earth, so she wants the body for drinking. Another one might feel like she's missed out on being playing as a child, so she wants the body for handstands. Right? I've come across successful business people. Totally, yeah. All sorts of people are manic depressive and it's all because of the underlying, underlying emotion. But when they get into the manic phase, now the spirits are heavily guiding what's actually going on for the person. And while that continues, right, they may do lots of different things that they would not normally do. So I knew one fellow who, you know, when, when this childlike spirit was connected, he would walk around on his hands, he was, he was 66 years old, and he'd walk around on his hands all day. <laughs> now, when that, when that spirit could no longer connect to him, his whole upper body felt like exhausted. Well, of course, if you're walking around on your hands all day, you imagine the stress on your body if you're doing it all day. His whole upper body would just get so exhausted. Um, I knew another manic depressed lady who would get into this high state and go into rages towards men. And that's because she had this rage towards men in herself when the spirits were connected. They were all, many of them were female spirits who also had a huge rage towards men. And she would just go into this terrible rages towards men that would last like 24, 48 hours. And she, it would just hap it'd ha keep happening for a month or two months before she was exhausted. And then it would all just bottom out on her. They can, but um, remember the law of attraction works at the soul level, not the intellectual level. So you can say what you like to a spirit, but if you have a feeling that, that attracts that spirit, in the end you're not going to get very far. Right? So this is why you hear quite often experiences where people say, I was screaming at them, go away, go away, but they hung around me, why is that? And I prayed to God for them to go away and they still hung around me. Like God doesn't do anything about it. but. God is already doing something about it, and that is your law of attraction is telling you what's within you. And that's the thing to remember here with all these spirit attractions, is that your own law of attraction is telling you that there's something in you that wants it. And you need to look at what that would be. Can you please explain what a soul-to-soul -soul spirit connection would feel like? Because I would like to cultivate sort of connections with the spirit world and I understand that I need to deal with my own emotions. Yep. Um, but aside from that, what am I feeling, looking for, sensing? A real soul to soul connection is sometimes so difficult to understand because 
because it's happening instantly on the feeling level and a lot of times you even think that it's your own feelings and, and it's not actually your own feeling it's actually the feeling of someone else who's sympathetic to you so in reality all connections between every single person on earth and every single person in the spirit world is a soul to soul connection but we don't recognize that here in our mind what we do instead is this person's soul has a body, a spirit body and a material body. This person's soul, let's say it's a spirit in this case, has a spirit body. This person has a thought in their spirit body's mind that gets transferred like from a feeling in their soul, but what can happen is they can then speak that word to that person, which is what often is happening when you go and see a medium what's happening is this spirit is speaking something to the medium and then the medium translates that if you like and tells you what that is do you follow me? that's often what is happening that's not a soul to soul connection although what's happening at the soul level is this spirit is attracted to this person because of soul conditions right so you will often see this where um, I've seen where I've talked to a medium and the spirit that is with them is only attracted to that particular medium because that medium gives them the ability to speak their voice to people on earth that they couldn't do when they were on earth right and so this soul this person in the spirit world speaks through the medium to people on earth because it gives the this person here a sense of power right in the spirit world so many times what's happening is that this person in the spirit world is talking via this person to you but they're doing it because of deeper emotional reasons that they've got no idea many times about within themselves. Um, I haven't probably finished that question, but go ahead with the, your question. What I'm interested in is, you know, what's the practical aspect of all this? Like, how, this emotion is like, when I'm experiencing different emotions, it's usually not one emotion, it's just a big pool of you know, everything coming up. Yep. And, you know, it's really hard to discern what I've made up. Because it's always stories that, that you attach to something and then that story is, well, you know, like, create more emotions, a different emotion, and you're just swimming in the pool of whatever's happening. Yep. So all this, you know, soul-to-soul -soul connection, spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection, you know, like, spirit, I, I want to be excused because I, I haven't got any clue of, you know, like, how deep and how much you've told this, you know, the rest of the people. Yeah. Uh, I'm hearing this for the first time. Yeah. But what's the practical aspect? Like, what can I do with all this? Like, what you know? What, what's the path here? And um, I feel that a lot of these questions are being asked because we're actually avoiding our emotions rather than getting into them. Do you understand what I mean by that? I, I feel to a degree we ask a lot of these questions because we want reassurance. Why do we want reassurance? Because we're actually afraid. Why are we afraid? Well, we need to look at that emotionally. You follow me? So while I am speaking to you these answers, I'm also very aware that for many of you asking the question is actually coming from a place of where you're afraid rather than actually coming from a place where you're feeling your emotions. Because the truth is that all of these answers that I'm giving you, will you will be able to answer if you connect to your own emotions and you'll know what's going on once you connect with your own emotions. So I feel that if we allow our emotions, no matter what they are, just as you described, um, all of the answers as to what's going on almost become superfluous. They almost become like they're no longer really necessary. But for many people, the reason why I do answer those questions is because they need firstly to be in a state of relaxation about a lot of their questions before they'll even touch their first emotion. Right? And for many of us, we, that's how it is, isn't it? Like, you want to know firstly here that everything's going to be okay before you go here. What if it's not okay? What if everything goes, you know, terribly wrong somehow? What if you're going to lose your mind or lose your identity or, you know, there's a lot of those kind of questions or fears that are within you. And so the key is to allow yourself to go into the emotion. But sometimes we do need to know answers of what is actually going on in order to allay our fears and connect with our emotions. Excuse me, Jane. So, what you described there was my son. It's me, it's the fear, it's me, 
Uh, what you described there with your son was... It's, it's my boy. Your boy is yeah. what? Can you just... He's, he's very... He's like that. He's got those two... One is... And the other one, he's just... He, he hears voices. He, he's always schizophrenic and... Ma and the other one is what? Uh, manic manic depression. Well. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, so your son I is being very influenced by spirits. Yes. Yep. And he can't sleep at night. No, he won't be able to do anything. No. Uh, no. And that's why... Yeah. You know, and he comes to me, he says, I'm very mad because I can't sleep. And, and so I need, uh, it's me, I have to do it. I have to do well, not just that, I, I would also spend some time explaining to him what's actually going on for him. That these are actually spirits he can talk to. These are people he can talk to, just like we are people you can talk to. What would you do if someone was bothering you here on earth? You would say to him, look, you know, you know, you wouldn't you talk to them and start... Like, I, I don't know, I've just about had enough of this. <laughs> you know, you don't even let me sleep. Can we at least make a deal that you let me sleep? <laughs> and, you know, you can at least speak to them about different things. But if you know that it's the soul, that you know that there's a soul transaction going on, and that is that there's an emotion in you, or in his case, there is an emotion in him that causes the attraction between him and the spirits, then he will understand understanding, well, I need to deal with that emotion if I want to have relief. It's very interesting, isn't it, that he goes to a charismatic my, church? My two, and my two girls, that they would have talked to their mother from that. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, we're talking together or go away from it. So I can't, what do I do? I've got my two girls that, you know, and don't think like me. All you can do is speak the truth and, and let it trigger you emotionally and let it trigger whoever it, uh, it triggers emotionally too. You're afraid of speaking the truth because you're afraid of how bad it might get. And just allow yourself to speak the truth and, and trust God that things will get better that, that way. Because at the moment you're, you're, you're avoiding speaking the truth about these matters, truths that you know, and what happens is that that, that avoidance of the truth just allows the situation to continue as it is. You're right, they're not probably going to listen, but that's part of the process you need to emotionally go through as well. Like, why am I avoiding speaking the truth just because somebody won't listen? Do you follow me? Yeah, I think that's for years when I children always think that mom was supposed to Yeah, well, a lot of children feel that way, don't they, about their parents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they're heavily religious, so that yes. modif modifies their feelings, yeah. All you can do is, as you say, all you can do is change yourself. You can't change somebody else in the end. You can only change yourself. So what is your response to it? How do you feel inside of you when your son's going through all these terrible experiences and yet you know the answer and yet you know that he won't listen to the answer? I feel responsible. So why do you feel responsible? Because I didn't see the sign. I didn't understand him for many years. Yeah. Until all this. Yeah. Didn't understand him. Yeah. So I feel like responsible that he's not understanding my boy. So go deeper than that. Why do you need to be responsible about understanding your boy? Now you're starting to connect with what it's about. And that's the emotion. What you're feeling now is what you need to let yourself feel. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Just feel this. Let yourself feel this. It's okay to feel this. It's a, it's a bad mother emotion, a feeling that I'm a bad mother and I'm a bad person because I didn't understand. And Let yourself feel those emotions. Yeah. And that's the emotion that's being triggered in you. And it's often, often when we're parents, we are so focused on trying to help our children that we forget the reason why we feel so focused about helping our children. And the reason is because we feel like we've been such a failure as a parent that we now have to make it better. Right? And, and so we need to feel that emotion. Does that make sense? We need to feel that emotion inside of us and allow ourselves to release that emotion. Because that, that emotion in itself being released will change the dynamic between ourselves and our children. Right? Does that make sense to everyone about the parent thing? So you, this emotion, 
is the emotion you really need to let, you're going to need to cry a bit more about it than just here. You're going to need to let yourself really tune into that emotion and feel that. And it's related to your own childhood where you were told that you are responsible for other people's <laughs> emotions. It's related to your childhood and, and what you were taught to do uh, as a child. Almost all of you as children were taught that you're responsible for your parents' emotions. And it's a major emotion that you'll need to release at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jen? Um, I have a spirit with me. It's the spirit of my Uncle John. Yep. And he came when you started to talk about schizophrenia. Yep. Now, I feel him to tell the story that he, he listened to a voice that said that they were God mm -hmm. and he went and he went in with an axe and he killed his wife and his young child, Robert. Yep. And he's in a... Uh, Fairly dark place. Very, very sad. Yep. But feeling that he wants to understand. And the question is, um, I listened to the voice that yep. told me yep. that this was the right thing to do. Um, yet I know now that oh, I've murdered my wife and, and child. my child and now I've murdered myself because I committed suicide yeah. and he says how, how much how much how, how can I take responsibility when I listened to a lie yeah. to something false does everyone hear what Jen was just saying? I'll just explain it a bit more loudly. Jen's uh, uncle John murdered his wife and his child and then committed suicide. And um, he, he did this because he had a voice claiming, the voice was claiming that the voice was God and, and God was telling him that he had to do this for God. Right? So was the voice God for a start? No. no. But him in his current in that state felt the voice was God. He believed. He believed that. Mm -hmm. right. So, what's actually, what was actually happening here was he was Jen's uncle on earth before he passed. He was this spirit. This spirit was in a very very dark place. The spirit was telling him because he could that he needed to kill his wife and children, and this spirit claimed to be God. Now, why would I believe that? What emotion within me would cause me to believe that? Someone was actually taking notice of him. Someone was giving them their time, his, their time. If it's obviously looking for something that was his, you know, like if it was God, oh, somebody loves me, somebody wants to So me, somebody cares? So yeah. somebody cares, emotion sort of thing, this person lonely, cares? Lonely, he says. He was oh, lonely. lonely. Yeah. He really was lonely. lonely. Yeah. So Jen, you can talk a bit more. He can speak, tell what his emotions were when he was listening to this spirit. What else was he feeling? He's felt some emotions towards his wife and his child. What were they? Um, they were Australian and he was Dutch and he, the, the lang he couldn't communicate lang so, so he language. So he couldn't understand. And... Um, um, he's speaking to me in Dutch. No, he's speaking in Dutch, so he's just got to... I can speak Dutch. He's, he's, he's saying that they couldn't hear him. That he, like his voice was muffled. So not listened to. Yeah. Which is the same as in me. And what, then what did, he, what, did he, what did that cause him to feel? He felt some emotion. Small. Small, so he felt small. small. And when he felt small, he didn't like feeling small, did he? No. So what would he then do? Get. He went for religion. He went for. Uh, he's saying he went. He went for church. He sought. He sought for. Sought for something bigger outside of himself. So he went for, himself up. So he felt really went, went felt really needy for God. Yeah. You could say, but yeah. then a spirit connected to him, claiming he was God. Can you see how this spirit just used the situation? The he says the voice was really comforting and gave him peace and gave him 
but he's also saying that's wrong. He, he's screaming at me. He's saying yeah, it's wrong. Need to, it's wrong. Need, I, yeah, yeah, he doesn't need to scream. scream. Yeah. It's it's wrong. He's in so much pain. He's in so God. much pain. Yeah. He he, the thing that he will need to do, and this, I'll just talk with him directly, is that he needs to feel these emotions. These were the emotions that he avoided, and in avoiding that. He got into this state where he believed this person and went ahead and did it. So all he needs to do from an emotional perspective and from God's perspective is to begin addressing the fact that he needs to feel like he was small. He needs to feel the emotions of not being listened to when he was a child himself. He needs to feel the emotions of loneliness that he was avoiding. But he's now angry, angry at himself. Angry. But while he remains in anger, he will not feel those emotions and nothing angry. will get better. So <coughs> he is angry, yeah. But what I'm saying to him is while you remain in those emotions of anger, you will not let yourself connect to these emotions and these are the emotions you need to experience before you'll get better and before you'll feel sorry truly for what you've done. <laughs> and Jen was just asking, uh, her, because her uncle has been talking to Jen now, Jen's feeling all of her uncle's anger and, and everything. And I'm just trying to remind her uncle that he needs to feel these emotions and not the anger. The anger is his denial. You follow me? He needs to get into these emotions. And some of those emotions, they are the emotions that caused him to do these actions. So these are the emotions he needs to let himself feel. Right? And he needs to stop projecting at Jen all of his anger, which is making Jen very uncomfortable. It's your choice. Anger is your choice to feel powerful rather than feeling powerless. Powerless. Yeah. So in other words, I'm wanting to feel powerful because I don't want to feel powerless. Because powerless feels bad, does it not? Like, how many of you want to cry? Really want to cry? really want to cry with all your heart, you know, people put their hands in it, I don't know about that. <laughs> right? When you get into the state where you just want to feel whatever it is, that's when you won't revert to anger. Anger is the choice to get away from the real emotion. Now, your question, which was a very important question. <laughs> it's a very important question funny because I'm a teacher, I'm so used to a group that I realise that I'm always false in the group, like I've got a job. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, my question was related, my name's Libby, um, related to the fact that, well it was from an earlier question that when we start feeling symptoms in our bodies or pain, that, that, that then is a suppression of our emotions. But going on with what AJ was saying about, I am needing a reassurance that all that energy that went into crying and grieving that it was not just wasted but I want to know why my foot hurt so much why my back went into spasm mm -hmm. yeah Good. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Libby. thank you thank you Can everyone understand the question yeah. very important question right. our body is a perfect machine for a start. That's the first thing to understand. Your body is a perfect machine telling you everything about your emotions. It's just that a lot of times we don't listen to it. Now, here's our body. <laughs> oh, true Libby, right? <laughs> not, not quite a good drawing of Libby, but... Now, you had a problem. Which ankle? Left, right? It's my right, um, back. Right, back ankle, down here. Here, the heel itself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was the other place where you lower back? Yeah, Down here? here these, in this area here? It's in the back. At the back? I had acupuncture, and because I had so much grief around the anniversary of a death, they were just saying that it would be fed is the heart, and that, that was depleted, yeah. therefore it was like a knock on effect. So you were feeling grief, which is a very, very heart-based, yeah. heart-based emotion. Right. So let's describe what's happening. 
when you, uh, our emotions are in layers, by the way. So um, often what will happen is the first emotions that rise up are the emotions that we find most acceptable. And the ones that come up afterwards are the emotions that we find less acceptable. And then the emotions that come up right at the end are the ones we find unacceptable. unacceptable. <laughs> okay. So what actually happens is that we often have pushed so many emotions down that when the first emotion starts rising, and from a spirit perspective, the emotion sort of flies out of us. Like if you see it as a spirit, you'll actually see emotion as a certain colour flying out of the spirit body as the person's processing their emotion. Does that make sense? And the reason why I'm saying that is a lot of spirits have noticed that effect, who are here today, have noticed that effect but don't understand what it is. But it's the emotion coming out of them. When they experience the emotion, the emotion's flying out of them. When that emotion flies out of them, it unlocks this certain areas in your body, in, in, your, in your soul, as soon as the emotion flows, the area that the emotion was locking up in your body gets unlocked. Now what happens when things get unlocked? You know, I was fixing the drains the other day <laughs> and I had a problem with my drains. And if you could think of that as a pipe with a block here and a block here and a block here. Now, and this is, this is where the water is going to flow out of down there. What's probably going to happen is you'll fix that blockage. In other words, that will become open. What happens then? A little bit comes out, which is the bit between there and there, and then this blockage gets exposed. Right? And what you will find as soon as you experience one emotion, usually within a day or two of experiencing these emotions, you'll find another blockage will be automatically exposed. And this is what's so difficult about doing this emotional work, is because it feels like, oh no, not, not another one, right? <laughs> I'm not ready for this one, like, and I'm not ready for this one today at work, you know, and if, in fact, in front of 20 people, I'm certainly not ready for this one. But the truth is that your soul feels that you are ready for it right at that moment. But we often don't think that, do we? Right? So what we do instead is we block it. Now, what's probably happened is you've cried away a lot of grief, which has unblocked your heart area a lot. Does that make sense? There's still more there, but it's unblocked that heart area a lot. But in here is some deep emotions of unworthiness. Right? They are a whole set of different emotions. They're not the same emotions as the grief emotions that you were just dealing with about the loss of a friend, right? That emotion is being dealt with very well. You are, you are clearing that emotion. It's one of the first emotions that is there, ready for you to deal with, and you're dealing with that very well. You're letting yourself grieve. But the grief is actually covering over this deep feelings of unworthiness, of losing, you know, what it means to lose friends. And, you know, there's a lot of tied in emotions with the unworthiness in there with this grief. And those emotions will start getting exposed, and it's those emotions you don't want to feel yet. Does that make sense? And as soon as you don't want to feel something, that particular area will affect that particular part of your body. So in other words, straight away lower back pain. Yeah. Right? See, I'm not aware of stuff with friends. It was like the anniversary of my mother, her death. Yep. Plus, all people who weren't close to me, all in a week, like this person died, and this person died, and this one was just... So it's not only just death, it's also your mum's death. Yeah. Right? But there's also this aspect of death too. Which, which, which is very much linked to this underlying emotion that you're struggling to let yourself feel. Which you? I don't know what it is. And it doesn't matter for you to know, all you need to do is start praying about it. Okay. Pray that over the coming weeks the law of attraction will show you what that's about. All right? All right. So the emotion starts flowing, which means the emotion will start flowing all over the place generally. But now what will happen is you'll go through cycles where different areas of your body will hurt. Huh? Oh, didn't I tell you that? <laughs> and I've had terrible pains in almost all parts of my body at different times. And when I say terrible pains, like sometimes I've been laid up for a couple of weeks with the pain. Um, so there was one time 
I remember uh, calling someone on the phone, this was after two weeks. I felt like I'd been kicked in the balls for two weeks. And so I couldn't get up, I couldn't move. I, 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 would cr I used to crawl, I was living by myself, and I used to crawl from my bed to cook myself some food <laughs> to eat. And then I would crawl onto the lounge suite and I'd stay there for the whole day and then I'd crawl back to bed. And that was my existence for two weeks because I couldn't move. No, it, it was the, it was me suppressing an emotion to do with uh, well, it was to do with an event in, when I was twenty in the first century of of being kicked pretty badly around and and a lot of other emotions tied in with that. And I didn't know that at the time. All I did was just feel feel like this terrible pain. Right? And it wasn't until later, once I released that emotion, that I realised that that pain was all about that particular emotion. Yeah. A lot of times we do have the pain, but there's so many bigger pains <laughs> that, uh, that we're not aware of it, firstly. And secondly, often um, because of the flow of the energy, the pain is exposed, right? It's a bit like, um, many of you have had children, right? Yeah. Have any of you been holding a little baby in your arms like this and working? And you're holding this baby 